Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you uh, some photo re retouching technique using Lightroom and Photoshop. In this tutorial, we will include uh, some HDR processing techniques, and basically, I will show you my my general uh, process of making uh, high dynamic range images. Okay, so we have a shot of a broken basket shot in my grandma's uh, back garden. So I have the three images. Okay, let me show you all of them. So I have the three images. Uh, it was shot handheld. You know, there is a little movement between the frames, but it will be okay. And the shots were taken using uh, uh, bracketing. So the shutter speed were changed between every shot. Okay, first step. Uh, what we will do is select all the three images, right click, photo merge, and choose HDR. Creating HDR images is a pretty new feature in Lightroom, which was introduced about a few months ago. Months ago. Uh, but it does a really good job. I really like it, so I recommend you to use it. high dynamic range images. It takes a little time for my machine to create the preview, but after all, it looks pretty good. Okay, the settings that we have. The auto align uh, will align all the frames. It's pretty uh, useful when you are shoot the images uh, handheld. So you, when you did not use a tripod, the auto tone uh, will adjust the tones and colors in the final image. And the deghost amount is also in connection with the aligning because um, if there is movement on the image, let's say someone walks in the background or something like that, uh, the deghost will remove these. Uh, these useless parts of the image. But in this case, uh, I prefer to use it low because there is no much change on the image, only the movement that was caused by hand holding when I was shooting the image. So these settings look good. So I click merge. Takes a little time to create the image. Once done, it will be look really cool. Okay, the HDR image is ready. Let's see the final result. Okay, as you can see, there is much more details in the uh, in the image as can be seen earlier. So it, it's pretty cool. I like it. Okay, uh, but you should keep in mind that you don't have to do all the lens correction on each. Uh, base images because these data will be uh, maintained in the HDR image too. So once your HDR image is ready, then you can go to lens correction and you can enable profile corrections and if remove chromatic aberration uh, in case if you have in your images. Let's say if if it's done, I say some blue here so I'm gonna increase this amount and also maybe some purple okay it looks cool okay great okay uh, there's a nice trick that I recommend you to try with all of your images uh, that can be found in Lightroom uh, in the 
camera calibration menu item. Uh, here you can look for the blue primary channel, uh, which generally um, uh, can boost the blue channel of the image, the channel's hue and the saturation. And in this case, I recommend you to boost the saturation because it will make uh, the colors look uh, more realistic. Okay, uh, there is no, there is none. Uh, no default boot value for this, but I will uh, recommend you to uh, keep uh, trying the values. But I say that you should not go uh, too far with this because it can ruin your photo. Okay, something here it looks like really good. Okay, afterwards I go to the basics. As you can see, there are some suggestions uh, uh, done by the Lightroom. So this is done by the uh, process of HDR creation. So if uh, if you are not satisfied with the overall uh, image that was created by the uh, photo merge process, then you can set the same settings as you can do in case of a normal image. So you can set exposure, contrast, and so on and so on. So what I see here, it's a bit overexposed here in the basket. So I decrease the exposure. Yeah, it's get, get, getting better. And I would like to get also have more contrast in the image. Uh, OK, that's it. And right now, the uh, Colors looks like a bit oversaturated for me, so I would like to decrease it. Okay, great. And also, the shadows are too much for me, so I also decrease it. Uh, using the whites and the blacks in the image, there is a small trick. On Windows, when you hold at the Alt key and click on the whites, as you can see, the, my image goes to black. And when you adjust this, this will uh, show. So you have to adjust the white values while you can see only a few small amount of uh, dots on the image while you are pressing the Alt key. OK, the same applies to the blacks is that uh, these are the points where the image is really black you know if you if you uh, decrease it really well there are lots of uh, parts of the image goes to black and in, uh, in case of whites when you boost it lots of uh, part will be blown out on the image as you can see also on the histogram so if you decrease it, you can see the changes in the histogram. OK, great. Some overexposure also happens, but never mind. OK, I would like to put the blacks black. OK. No, it's a bit too much for me. OK, great. What I would like to also do is to boost the clarity of the image because there is nice uh, texture in the image uh, at the around the basket. So what I would like to do is to boost the clarity, with, which will make it more dramatic. Okay, that's enough. Okay, I think the colors are almost ready maybe the reds are a bit too much for me so i would decrease the saturation of the red channel and maybe i will um do the same for the oranges and i would like to boost it for the yellow because yeah because it, it looks like 
that matches my table. Okay. The split toning, uh, we won't use this feature, but in the detail part, I also recommend if you shoot in row, that you also you have to keep in mind that uh, when your camera generates an image from the row image, so when you create JPEGs directly in your camera, it will apply some default amount of sharpening on the image. But in case of raw images, uh, there is no default sharpening applied. So I recommend to do every time when you retouch an image, uh, go to the detail options and use the sharpening. Generally, my amount, uh, which is good as a starting point, the sharpening amount around 100, the radius about 1.2 or 1.3, uh, the detail around 25, the default value is okay, and there is a really nice trick that I love in Lightroom, is the masking uh, of sharpening, because in the default case, it means that the, the sharpening will be applied to the whole image. But generally, you want to do this only on the part of the image which is in focus, because there is, there is no sense to apply sharpening on out of focus things in your image. So what I uh, recommend is to use the Alt key, as in case of the black and white channels, as I were I was shown in the basic. So push the Alt and change the masking. As you can see, the whole image is white, which means the sharpening will be applied everywhere. But once you move the slider, it starts to go black. And as you can see, Uh, as you can see, all, only the, the sharp parts of the image will be get sharpened, and also some of the uh, main lines in the background. But I think it looks pretty cool. Okay. The same applies uh, to the noise reduction as the sharpening, because generally there is no noise reduction applied to your raw images. So uh, uh, what I do, uh, uh, use some values near the uh, 40 or 50, which would like to work for me, but it's up to your taste, and it depends really on your image. OK, great. And that, uh, and at last, what I would like to do is to uh, recompose this image because uh, because the basket is composed to the center, uh, and I don't like this really well. But in case I would like to do something like this to uh, put the basket into the into a golden ratio and also the stick makes a, a nice <coughs> line in the foreground uh, which looks good so i would like to do this if you want to change the grid of your um, of your crop tool is to uh, you can push the O button and it will, uh, it will change the grid as you can see this is for the uh, uh, gold ratio uh, this is also also the gold ratio but it's in a, a spiral way uh, there is a normal grid this is useful when you have much of uh, horizontal and vertical lines in your in your image and it helps you to align it. Uh, this is the this is this grid is about the rule of thirds. This is a really basic composition technique, let's say. This one is the di diagonal. 
Um, so that's it. But I go for the rule of thirds, not for the rule of thirds, for, but the golden ratio, okay? Uh, and generally, this will be my last image. Okay, as you can see, uh, maybe it's too, too high. Yeah, maybe that's uh, okay. Great. So basically, this was my uh, tutorial. So uh, if you want to see the difference between the original image and let's say before the cropping, yeah, it's much more better. You know, it's a, it looks a pretty flat for me at the beginning, but after applying all these settings, I think the basket really pops out from the background. So I like the really like the final image. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the this tutorial about basic HDR technique in Lightroom. Uh, if you do, uh, don't forget to follow me on YouTube or, or share this video with your friends or colleagues. Um, and if you have any questions about this technique or regarding any photo retouching technique, uh, don't hesitate to ask me in here in comments or, or on Facebook or Google+. Okay, guys, have a nice day.